lifestyle of abuse did you suffer? Um, physical abuse, mental abuse, and sexual abuse. Can you walk me through your story a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, when I was five days old, um, my mother brought me to my aunt's house because uh, her and my biological father had been in a, uh, an altercation and she dropped a cigarette on my head and um, burned me with it. And she knew she could trust my aunt, so she dropped me off. Um, and I asked my aunt last night, because I never knew I was five days old. I always thought it was 10 days old, and I don't know why I meant, that makes such a difference. But my mother told me she was shot, and that's why, with a BB gun. And I learned last night that's not true. Um, it was just an argument, and my mother was a severe alcoholic. Um, she saw her pain a lot more than she saw as kids being and she is just a product of her environment I still love her um, I just I connect God replaced all the relationships I lost with everyone else put Lolita in my life Ray Maxim my supervisor just put angels around me and I feel like the devil's come across to steal my happiness my entire life but he's not gonna win it's not going to win, and I believe that hurting people hurt people. So if we can get down to why people abuse and deal with people at a younger age, especially with children, then we can help them go through the process. You know, I didn't. I, I'm lucky, I ha and I'm blessed. I had people next to me that did care about me and did show me what true love really was and what normalcy looked like. It was uncomfortable. It's still uncomfortable to this day if I ever hug my mom. It's just not there. But it's hard to miss a steak and miss it if you've never eaten one. <laughs> so. Okay. Can you kind of walk me through some of the abuse that you went through mm -hmm. in your marriage and domestic violence? Yes. Um, my uh, children's father, uh, they have the same dad. Um, I was 18 years old working at Denton State School um, in Denton, Texas. And. Um, he, there was something mentally wrong with him. Uh, I don't know if it was bipolar. I vaguely remember that being thrown out there, but uh, I was actually in a shelter while I was with him. I went down to shelter, but I went back because I kind of felt like I was being punished being at the shelter. I had a curfew. I could only, I had to tell them when I went to the convenience store, when I came back, there wasn't a lot of counseling, no services like that. I was just stuck in a room with a bunk bed with another woman. Um, and I got tired of that and went right back. Um, but until I was tired of going through it and until I was ready to walk away, because when you grow up that way, and my stepfather was so abusive, it was unbelievable. Um, when you've been through that, it was less abusive to you, so it doesn't seem as bad, if that makes sense. Um, he hung me over bridges. He tried to rip out my episiotomy stitches to have sex with me when I had my daughter. Um, and he was, I'm just so lucky I didn't die. Not lucky, I'm blessed. I keep having to tell myself and correct that because I don't believe in luck. But um, I had a lot of people just involved. And then once I left him, I married my high school. Well, once I left him, uh, I married a man which I don't really bring him up very often, but it was a four-year marriage. Um, he did drugs, I found out, and was going to strip clubs. So we ended that relationship. And then I met, after 18 years, met my high school sweetheart. Um, thought that it was godsend. I had been single for four years. I was doing good, and he came into my life, and it was like, wow. But it was... Like fresh. I've only been divorced since December, but I didn't recognize the red flags. I thought I would be smarter and that nobody would be able to pull the cover over my eyes anymore, but he was able to. I get mad at myself for that, but I'm glad I'm out now. Lolita was my marriage counselor two years ago, and she got to witness things as well during our counseling sessions but basically he was physically abusive he shot a gun into my tv while i was right next to the tv about two foot away i lost my hearing my daughter was on the other wall taking a shower and um he had a felony it was a felony 
but they reduced it to deadly conduct. But my daughter was outside in a towel and I didn't even realize then that I should leave because I thought it was his PTSD or something that he just got mad because he was military. And then I thought, no, the man ain't even been in deployment. <laughs> um, and then um, he knocked out my front tooth uh, and fractured my eye socket. Um, he still claims to this day that he was just trying to sit me down. So there's no accountability, but I learned you don't need accountability from your abuser to recognize that it is abuse. Right. If they can't see that, that's with them and that's between them and God. Um, did I uh, always say the right things? No. Um, did my children give him a hard time, his stepchildren? Yes, they did. But I also learned he wasn't even being in a relationship with his own children and everything that I was told about him from the very beginning was not true. He was actually going through a divorce. Um, so I believe that I was able to see and I actually walked away, but I was one day from being divorced in December and I contacted him and said, are you sure this is what you want? And I went over there. I was even willing to stay with him. I was like, God, you gotta have some hope, change his heart, you know, come on, he can, I know his potential, you know? And um, God was like, no, I'm sweeping you away. You're going to bigger and better places. And that's why hurting people hurt people, but healing people help heal other people. That's what helps heal you inside. And just being around this plethora of women that are great. I mean, Texas Black Excellence Awards, Shades of Purple, just so many resources that are out there. The women that with all their different stories, we may not be very strong alone, but together, collectively, you can change lives. I know it. And I'm not just being cliche about that. I truly believe it starts with one person. And I asked Lolita this morning, looking down, uh, not looking down, but looking at what's happening now and what is going on and what, what you're witnessing. Aren't you proud? You know, um, I'm just happy to be a part of it. I, I really, truly, I feel like, finally feel like I found my place. Why do you feel it's important to tell your story to others? So people will realize that it's really not the end and that you're not stuck and that my faith in God that alone got me through the lonely nights the by myself and you just gotta it's easier said than done there's a lot of people that are where I was two years ago and are still in it and if you just tell your story and you're vulnerable I believe people are like wow because that's what related to me if I heard people speak and people tell their story it inspired me by hearing it because I knew someone I wasn't the only one that's ever faced that you know because you don't talk to people you don't just go and say hey <laughs> you beat me up the other night you know I just want to talk to you about it no it's you do keep it hidden and so I finally feel like talking about it is actually healing me too even right now as we speak